And so I know that probably not all of y'all are uh, from Oklahoma and we're gonna use uh, uh, San Angelo, Texas when with the prices. And the reason why I use San Angelo, Texas, I think I've told this uh, a lot of times is that San Angelo is a consistent market. They, hit my, they have a market every week. Uh, and so uh, the prices are pretty consistent. And really when we look at Oklahoma versus Texas, the prices are not all that different. They follow the same patterns. There might be a little cheaper in Oklahoma, but usually it's not much more than what the cost of uh, transportation is. So, but anyway, so, but if you're not from around this part of the world uh, and, and you're not, and you don't agree with the prices I'm fixing to throw up here, uh, just remember so you know, prices are, reg are affected regionally and, and, uh, and, and, but the patterns are gonna be pretty close to the same no matter where you're at. And so that's the thing to look at if you're not from here. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. This is a chart I like to throw up. I've been I throw it up here the last couple of meetings. I've talked about uh, goat prices and stuff. And, and what it is is the on the left is the goat inventory uh, for the U.S. The meat goat inventory graphed on the left with the annual price, uh, the Texas San Angelo annual price for uh, goats. And you, and I and I put the forty to eighty pound range, just the annual price average. And you can see here, you know, we hit. Uh, we hit our peak here, 2008. Prices were setting down around, you know, a dollar and a half a pound, and then from 2008, we just steadily had a steady decline, and prices have done nothing but really kind of, you know, trend upwards. And as you look at this, you know, you don't have to be an economist, uh, but this is something that they taught Scott and I. You know, this is economics 101. When prices are doing this, the market is trying to buy more goats. They, they want the goat industry to expand. And when we saw the, to, uh, the price increase from 19, 2019 to 2020, where we got up over $3 a pound, I thought for sure we we're going to start seeing uh, goat inventory numbers going up and, uh, and, and because the market is wanting more goats. And so with that, that kind of sets the stage for what we're going to talk about. And I'm going to... So, you know, here's, here's the, uh, the other side of the story, you know, so here USDA does an annual inventory report uh, as of January 1, and the total goat population, which there's three segments of the goat population, there's Angora, there's dairy, and then there's meat goats, but as the whole, the, the, as a whole, we're down almost 3%, and so we didn't see an increase. We actually saw a pretty significant decrease uh, uh, in the goat population. So now where, which population saw the decrease? Well, we pull up and look at the Angora goats and, and Angora goats are not a player anymore. Uh, we're down to less than 150,000 head and, and they saw another decrease uh, again. And again, they've been on a real steady decline since about 2017. Uh, the mohair program that went away a long time ago, uh, so it's it's really hard to get uh, you know to jump in on the Angora goat. It's more of a specialty market now, and so uh, no big surprise to see a decrease there. Uh, this did surprise me just a little bit from a standpoint. Dairy, uh, dairy goat population was down after several several years of of, of steady increases in, in dairy goats, and other I don't have any real uh, just empirical data. Uh, this is just me looking at, at, at the numbers and at uh, the situation. I think this is probably more due to COVID-19 uh, because uh, I think the dairy goat expansion that we've been seeing is more of the local foods movement, a little kind of farm to table type movement. And in 2019, that movement was slowed down quite a bit just because of COVID and, and stuff. And so maybe that had a, a, a you know, an impact. I know COVID had a real negative impact on dairy cows. And so maybe we saw this, you know, maybe it's translating down to dairy goats and we saw kind of a big decrease in the dairy goat population, which I didn't, again, I really didn't expect that either. But now what we're all here to talk about is the meat goat population. And again, I thought we would hit over this 2.1 million head and we didn't, we, we just went right back down to just, uh, just a, uh, down 2% for the year. And so the market was telling us that it wanted more meat goats. And what we do, we just, uh, we decreased it. So what does that mean? Well, when you look at this, that means that we're gonna have fewer uh, uh, breeding animals in the herd. And that means a smaller production, small, you know, smaller supply. 
And so, you know, in the, in the grand scheme of things, that helps prices, uh, you know, that helps boost, uh, keeps prices up a little bit. So, and we'll get to prices here in a minute. But when we look at where the goats are, are nothing really has changed. You, you see over here on the right-hand side of the screen, the top 10 did not change uh, at all. We, you know, uh, just down the line, you know, te Texas is still number one. Nobody's going to catch Texas. Uh, Tennessee for the first time in a couple, uh, well, they did it once again about a, two, three years ago, but they dropped below 100,000 head. Uh, and, and then uh, Oklahoma and California both dropped down a little bit, still top four. Missouri hangs in there to top five. But the real telling part of this map is when you pull this one up, is the change uh, from 2020 to 2021. And that top 10, if you were to look at those states, every one of those states, except for Florida and Alabama, had a decrease. So all the top 10 producing meat goat producing states decreased their uh, herd, except in Missouri was, you know, unchanged. But, the, you know, Texas was down, Oklahoma, uh, Tennessee, California, all down. And all down, you know, you know, 3% number doesn't look very big, but 3% of 700,000 is quite a bit bigger than the 6% drop in Oklahoma. So, so, but you see pretty, you know, pretty significant drops in the uh, meat producing region. So there's the reason why we saw a decline is, is those states uh, saw a decline in the in production or in the herd. Another story to tell, this is, again, I've, I've found this kind of fascinating, uh, you know, 2008 was when we hit our peak uh, uh, goat numbers. And then since then, we've been dropping. And then since 2008, our imports have just steadily gone up and up and up and up and up. And, and then, you know, we thought we saw a little slowdown here in 15 and 16. Then it jumped right back up 2017, you know, to a record amount. Uh, and, and so, you know, I kind of thought, well, you know, we're going to start bringing, you know, at the prices that we're seeing uh, goats being bought here in, in the United States, we can bring in the frozen uh, goat carcasses a lot cheaper, although that's not preferred. Uh, but I was wondering if we we're going to start hitting a price point that, you know, keep our prices down and they're going to start bringing more frozen goat meat in. But then 2018, 27% decrease, uh, almost 28% from 2017. And now, if you think back, Australia was going through some wildfires during this time. Uh, and although we get all kinds of reports of how this affects the beef industry and the sheep industry in Australia, I don't see much of how it affects the goat side of it. So, but they had to have some effect, but then we saw a rebound back in 2019, up 18%. And then, bam, 2020, we're down 45% from 2019 and, and 2019 is not what we call a you know banner year we're just kind of back up to maybe previous other levels and so we're and then we see a 45 percent decrease in 2020 now reasons again australia went through after they went through the wildfire situation they went through uh floods and then and so floods happened and again covid19 happened and and so what exactly all this translates, why this, but it, it's all Australia, but we're down 45%. And when we look at 2021, the, the data usually lags about uh, two to three months. I looked at, at January's numbers were out and January 2021 is down 22% from January 2020. So we're not starting off uh, very good as far as you know imports. I say very good, it depends on which way you wanna look at it, but import numbers, uh, I think if we go forward, I, I don't think, I think we'll probably beat 2020 numbers. Uh, I, I don't know that we'll get up, you know, up back to these 20, you know, 15, 16 levels, but we should be able to top that 10,000 metric ton level uh, a little bit. And, and I know you might be thinking 10,000 metric tons. Uh, that's not a great deal. Well, do the, do the math a little bit, you know, uh, uh, these carcasses, you know, at 45, pound carcasses 10,000 metric tons is a lot of goats and so uh so but i don't think we're going to see the imports bounce back to pre 2020 le our past our 19 18 levels but i think we'll beat 2020 levels so so let's look at prices uh last year you know when i, I did I, I do this uh kind of market outlook talk every year about march or april I talked about how we were pretty much in line. The purple line here is 2020. 
uh, we're pretty much in line with uh, 2019, actually a little above. COVID really didn't have an effect on the goat market. Uh, you know, beef market, the sheep market, all of them saw real tremendous hits to their prices. The goat, we saw maybe a little bit, but actually uh, the, the ethnic holidays that now happen in May and June kind of helped us out, kept prices up pretty good. And what I really fully expected us to see the summer slump that we typically see. Uh, and, and I thought we'd probably stay above 2019 prices, but I did not think see this. And, and again, I have, think that has to do with the imports uh, being down. Uh, supply was low, and so we kept prices up. And you see here the 2020 average price uh, was $3.17. We averaged over $3 a pound uh, for 2020. That is you know, roughly a 40 cents increase uh, uh, over 2018 and 2019 and over the five-year average. So really good prices. So, you know, are we, you know, we started off 2021 and I had to rescale my graph. Okay. And so we, you see here, January, we're up at about 380 a pound and just February, we averaged over 410. And then I pulled up, I pulled up the first week of, of March in San Angelo, they averaged the same 40, 60 pound groups averaged 452 a pound. And now I'm talking these, now these are number one selections, kids, and that's what this graph is, but 452 a pound. So number one, uh, prices are really, really good uh, for, uh, for the for goats. Now we go to the next weight group, 60 to 80 pounds. It's kind of a similar story. Uh, I, again, I thought we'd see the summer slump. We didn't see it. When we got done with 2020, we averaged again over $3 a pound, a 40 cent increase over 2018, 2019 prices in the five year average. And, and then, you know, again, it was a good time to have goats. Uh, our 2021 starts out. We averaged 360, almost 360 pound in January, almost $4 a pound in February. And then we pull up March, first week of March, 436. So again, I'd have to rescale my graph again, but prices are really, really good. So what does it mean for the rest of the year? And so, I decided, and, and I'll show this to y'all, uh, and, and this this chart is worth exactly what you all are paying for it, uh, but I thought I would try to do a little, you know, kind of quarterly predictions uh, for the two weight groups of selection number ones, kind of using the data that I have, and when you put in, you know, 2021 quarter number ones almost in the books, and we're going to average more than $4 a pound for that first quarter, which is, you can see there, is just, you know, um, you will probably going to almost be a dollar a pound more than the first quarter in 2020. And same, or along the same lines for the 60 to 80 pounds. So we're going to be really good. So if you fought, if it kind of, you know, look at the, uh, the data and look at, and if it follows kind of seasonal patterns, you're going to see, you know, uh, I think quarter number two, we, we might get a little bit below $4 or right at $4 a pound. Uh, for quarter two, uh, the summer, if the normal summer slump happens, uh, we'll probably see prices drop. But again, I'm guessing somewhere around about three and a half a pound. And then we'll see pick up again back to, in quarter number four, uh, you know, over about 370, 380 a pound. Uh, again, it's not $4 a pound what we're seeing now, but those, I don't think anybody here would argue that, that anything over $3 a pound, I think we'd be extremely happy with. And I think the same goes for 60 to 80 pounds. Now, what can change all this if Australia all of a sudden decides to get back in importing uh, goat meat uh, uh, back to the U.S. and get back to maybe 2017 levels? These prices probably could see a, a little bit further uh, downward pressure, but I don't think we're going get, to get down below anywhere below three dollars a pound, at least in this part of the, of the country. Uh, so and now. I did look at the price difference between number ones and what they call number twos. And still those number twos are still gonna average pretty good prices. And they might uh, might get closer to $3 a pound, may dip a little below in the summer slump periods, but still really good prices throughout the year. I, uh, I, again, uh, I know I was talking to some people before we, uh, before we kind of got started and, and talk about the big demand for commercial uh, dolings. And, and, and it, as people see these big prices uh, and they 
may start holding back more uh, does, more females for the breeding herd or start selling more as breeding animals. That actually reduces the meat supply. So these prices right here, again, that'll help them bolster them up and keep them up there. So overall, I think 2021 is going to be a pretty good year. So the last thing I want to show you, I decided I'd go ahead and do a, a, a kind of a budget uh, for uh, goats. Now, I just did a 30 head meat goat budget with different kidding rates and, and I put the dudgeon on a per doe basis. Uh, and it, I still, the economist to me just hates to put anything, you know, over $3 a pound because, you know, uh, that, that makes, it's kind of like, it makes it look really, really good. But so I, I just put $3 a pound, uh, which is well below the 2020 average, put a 10% death loss and even, and even held back 20% replacement rate. And so, and then different kidding rates. And I've always told people, if you're in the goat business and if you're not getting 150% uh, kidding rate, uh, you probably need to uh, look at something else because that's uh, kind of the magic breakover point in my opinion. And, and so I looked at 150% up to 180%. <clears throat> you look at the revenue there uh, uh, for the different, uh, you know, the different kidding rates. I even increased feed prices over what I had in the 2020 budget by about 15%, uh, percent, uh, anticipating feed prices to go up by that much. And, and it could go up even a little more, but I didn't want to get too wild with my estimates. Uh, vet costs going to stay pretty, you know, I, I actually increased vet costs up a little bit. Marketing costs stay about the same. And then other costs stayed pretty, uh, even up, increased them to some degree. And still you got average, you know, dough costs about $106 a year. Fixed cost, and you know, 40 bucks a goat. And so here's our uh, returns to la uh, labor, land, and management. I don't put any labor uh, charges in my budget. Uh, I figure uh, we're paying ourselves with the returns. And you can see here, we have a kind of a wide range of profits, for, all positive, $46 to 90 bucks a head. And that's after fixed cost. So again, pretty good prices. And that's three, that's at $3. So really and truthfully, you know, when I told people 150% is the, is the breakover point, even 150% is, is, is not the break even point. It's still down below here a little ways. And so it, for those of us who are doing uh, better than this 150% uh, times are going to be pretty good. Uh, it would take, it would take me a pretty, it'd take me a pretty hard try to try to force this budget to get to where even this 150% is down below or at break even. So uh, again, good times to be a goat producer. The last thing I wanna show here is I, I decided, uh, cause I know uh, raising goats are not the popular thing to do. And so, you know, cattle, and especially here in Oklahoma, cattle are king. And so when we put it on a cow equivalent where five goats equals one cow, this is the profit margins that these guys are, uh, are making. So. And I guarantee you, I got a lot of cattle guys that I work with that would love to be making this $231 a head profit and that are not seeing that. So uh, I think right now that the goat market's going to be pretty good and, and there's pretty much no way that we can, or, well, I shouldn't say no way, but pretty hard to uh, not turn a profit this year. So. Yeah.